Welcome to this lesson on standard form. Standard form is another way to write the equation of a line. So we've already talked about slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. Standard form is written as ax plus by equals c. So the first thing I want to go over is how to convert to slope intercept form. To convert from standard form to slope intercept form, we need to isolate the y or get y by itself. So we are solving for y. So let's try some examples. The first thing I want to do is move the term 3x to the other side of my equal sign. So right now it's a positive 3x. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. So I'm going to bring down my 2y. Now be careful here. Do not try to combine these because they are not like terms. 10 and 3x cannot be combined. So instead I'm just going to write them as an expression. And if you remember, slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So the term with x comes first. So I want to write my x term first and then my constant, which is going to be my b. And it's a positive 10, so plus 10. All right, next I'm going to divide everything by 2 because I want to isolate y. So I'm going to divide this by 2 and every term by 2. So 2 divided by 2, that's 1y. And then I'm going to simplify the rest of my fractions. So negative 3 over 2, I can't reduce that any further. I'm going to leave it negative 3 over 2 x and then a positive 10 divided by 2 that's positive 5. So that is my answer where the slope is negative 3 over 2 and my y-intercept is 5. All right number 2 5x minus 3y equals 15. Now I'm going to show you another way here instead of subtracting 5x from both sides we can just think about this as moving this 5x term to the other side of my equal sign. And when something moves across the equal sign, it changes signs. Just like here I started with positive 3x and then I ended up with a negative 3x. So I want to start with positive 5x and when I move it across the equal sign, it's going to change to negative 5x. It's the same thing as subtracting 5x. This just makes it a little bit simpler so you don't accidentally try to combine that 5x and 15 because remember they're not like terms. So when I move it over it's going to become negative 5x and then I'm going to bring down this positive 15. So same thing as number one, just thinking about it in a different way. All right, now let's divide everything by negative 3. So that's going to be 1y or just y negative 5 over negative 3. I can't reduce that, but a negative divided by negative is a positive. So positive 5 thirds x. And then 15 divided by negative 3 is negative 5. All right, let's try one more. So again, I'm just moving this x term to the right side of the equal sign. And when I move it, it's going to change to negative x. So I'm going to bring down my 4y equals negative x and then just bring down my positive 16. All right, now let's divide everything by 4. So I have 1y or just y equals. All right, so I have a negative x divided by 4. That's really like a negative 1x divided by 4. So when I write this, I'm going to write it as negative 1 fourth x. And then 16 divided by 4, that is positive 4. All right, go ahead and pause the video now and try the six examples, and then we will check it. All right, let's see how you did. So number one, I need to move this negative 2x to the other side of the equal sign. The same thing as adding it to the other side. So when I add it to the other side, it's going to become positive 2x. 
and then bring down my plus 15 and then divide everything by negative 5 so y equals see 2 over 5 that won't reduce but I am going to bring that negative out front negative 2 fifths x 15 divided by negative 5 that's negative 3 If you made a mistake, just erase it and fix it as I go over these. All right, number two, I'm going to move this to the other side. So it's going to become positive x. Bring down your positive 13. And, well, that one's done. Easy. Y is by itself. Number three, I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. So it's going to be a negative 4x minus 21. Don't forget to bring down that negative with the 21 and then divide everything by 7. So y equals, let's see, negative 4 over 7. That won't reduce or simplify. Negative 21 divided by 7 is negative 3. All right, number 4. This is going to move over. So negative 3x, bring down your positive 27. Divide everything by negative 9. Negative 3 divided by negative 9, that is positive 1 third. 3 over 9 reduces to 1 over 3, and then we have a negative divided by a negative, that's positive. 27 divided by negative 9 is negative 3. Remember, always reduce your fractions completely. 5. Subtract that negative 14x. Move it to the other side. Divide everything by 2. Let's see, negative 14 divided by 2, that's negative 7x. Negative 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5. Last one. Notice I'm bringing this negative down. Whatever sign is in front of a term stays with that term. I'm going to add that 5x to the other side so it becomes positive 5x. And then divide everything by negative 12. So y equals 5 over 12, that won't reduce, but I am going to write the negative out front. Now your y-intercept is really up to you. It's probably going to be easier as far as graphing to change it to a decimal, but you can also leave it as a fraction. I'm going to change it to a decimal, so 30 divided by negative 12, that's negative 2.5. All right, let's keep going. Let's talk about graphing in standard form. So we can use standard form to solve for x and y intercepts by substituting in 0 for each variable. So this is what I mean. For my x-intercept, I'm going to substitute 0 in for y. So I'm going to rewrite this, but I'm going to change my y to 0. I'm substituting in 0. All right, so 4 times 0 is 0, so I just have 2x equals 10. Divide by 2 on both sides, so x is 5. And then for my y-intercept, I'm going to substitute in 0 for x. So 2 times 0 is 0, so I just have 4y equals 10. Divide by 4, so y is 2.5. So when you graph these, that means I want my line to go through 5 on the x-axis. That's my x-intercept, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way out here. And 2.5 on my y-axis, so 1, 2, halfway between 2 and 3. And then you just take those two points and you connect them with a line. And that is how you graph in standard form. All right, so let's try a couple more. So for my x-intercept, I'm going to substitute in 0 for y. 4 times 0 is 0, so 3x equals 12. Divide by 3. 
x is 4. For my y-intercept, substitute 0 in for x. 3 times 0 is 0. Divide by 4. So y equals 3. So that means 4 on my x-axis, that's the x-intercept, and 3 on my y-axis. And then draw a line. Alright, I'll do one more with you. Oops. Okay, so let's substitute in 0 for y. And you may have noticed you really can just cover up the y term because it always cancels and goes to 0. So that's a little shortcut if you want to do it that way. Divide by negative 5 on both sides. So x is negative 2. Alright. Change my x to 0. So negative 5 times 0 is 0. Divide by 5, divide by 5. So y equals 2. Alright, so x is negative 2. It's over here. y is positive 2. And then connect with the line. Alright, go ahead and pause the video and try 3 and 4 by yourself. All right, let's see how we did. So for my x-intercept, I'm gonna abbreviate. You may have noticed, like I said before, you can really just get rid of the y term because it's gonna go to zero. So this is a little shortcut. For your y-intercept, get rid of the x term, but just be careful, keep that sign. Whatever sign's in front of the term stays with it. Divide by negative 6, so y equals negative 3. So positive 2, negative 3. Number 4. x is negative 3. Y is 21 divided by negative 14. That's negative 1.5. So negative 3, oops, negative 3 and then negative 1.5, halfway between negative 1 and negative 2. All right, you can stop the video now and complete the practice.